And well, we are very happy to see so many of you here today. We were very excited to present these trainings specifically, and I'll give you some context about why we are doing here from ABD. In this case, between February and March, we are holding a series of online trainings within the LILA international project framework. And with these trainings, we aim at creating a platform of dialogue, exchange of good practices between professionals who work with women and girls who are victims of gender-based violence, trafficking, and their children being affected. And the idea is to be able to provide tools to increase the capacity of professionals and supporting survivors. So, I'll give you a couple of guidelines. This session is being recorded, as you've seen, it will be uploaded on the ABD channel, a YouTube channel, in case you want to watch it again or share it. And after the end of this training, we will send you an email with a questionnaire and we would appreciate it if you could please fill it out because it helps us improve and it helps us see the, the impact of our trainings. And remember that if you want or need a certificate of attendance, you can email us at international at ABD, you, you have the, the email address on the email and you can send us an email today at the address you will see on the email and we'll send you the certificate of attendance. There were so many people who had signed up that we have used the webinar format for this training. So if you have any questions, you need to write on the chat or on the Q&A box and our colleague Carlota, who will be here during the entire training, will reroute all the questions to Carol so that she could answer them. And that would be all I would now to, I would like now to introduce Carol, Carolina Toralvo. She is a PhD in social and cultural anthropology, and she has a diploma in social work. She has extensive training in systemic family therapy and a master in group and multifamily interventions. And she has been accompanying people and families for more than 15 years now in different situations of social vulnerability. So she's very trained and very experienced. And I hope you will enjoy this training very much. And Caro, you have the floor. Good morning, uh, Mireya. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm very happy to share everything that we do. I hope it will be useful for everyone who is part of the workshop. And I will now screen share. Let's begin. Can you all see it all right? Yes, now it will. Yes, perfect. And as we said, this format of the webinar does not allow me to see people's faces. It's a shame because it's not as participative as other formats, but we'll try to communicate via the chat. I will close my, my window, the window of my camera, so as not to see myself, and let's begin. The roadmap of today's session that I thought of was starting from the beginning where we are as an entity and how the services and the social structure is generated here in Catalonia and in Spain and then where these uh, work proposals uh, stem from, the intervention framework, the foundation of the work, the group models, the theoretical models. I was saying we'll give a theoretical framework as to why we work in a certain manner with the reference theoretical models, then group spaces. I changed the order here because I'd rather we see first the group spaces and then the methodology, how we work within these spaces, the tools that we use, the registries. And then at the end, we'll see the conclusions, some data from the assessments that we've made. And what I would like is for you to see several video clips due to data protection, data protection laws. There are internal videos of the groups that I cannot 
show here in this workshop, but we have participated in a documentary of these types of interventions. So I will show you a clip of this documentary and another one about an award that we won from the Barcelona Town Council. So where are we? Here in Spain, after the transition, all society was structured into three main sectors. This is just to understand where we are and why we work in a certain manner in NGOs and also as a general map. The first sector is the government, public administration. The second sector is the financial, trade, banking, companies. And then the third sector, which starts with organized civil society. Neighbors would organize, would create organizations of neighbors and also professionals of psychology, etc. also started weaving this social fabric according to the needs of the neighborhoods. And this is important in order to understand where ABD comes from and where this third sector comes from. The three main functions are detecting needs, what we see in the neighborhoods, seeking answers and political advocacy. Uh, one of our intentions is to generate advocacy. After the transition, for example, we started to see a lot of drug consumption, and thanks to the third sector, neighbors, professionals in the neighborhoods detected that the families, the neighbors, started having difficulties with drug consumption, and this led to them organizing into associations, them pressuring the administration to give them public resources such as centers, to care for drug-dependent uh, persons, uh, treatment centers based on the, the need. And the focus here is citizens and persons. And in this is the difference between the, or the, what's in common with the third, second and the first sector is that it's, that it's focus on the public. This is a slide for you to understand our entity. There are different areas of work, dependency, inequality, and the service where I work is framed within the area of family, childhood, and gender. There are different bodies to care for uh, families, women who suffer from gender-based violence. There are different uh, devices, different uh, groups and bodies. We also have inclusion, poverty, different areas. And within each area, there are different services and work. And then in terms of structure, we also have a Department of Communication, a Department of Human Resources, accounting, volunteering. These are the different areas that the different services drink from. And so why do we do, why do we organize these groups? What were we detecting, as we said, in the third sector? What did we detect in the neighborhood, on the street, in the communities? We saw that we started working with these groups in 2011, 2012, in the previous crisis, and here I'm showing the consequences and what we have detected since COVID, but it is quite comparable to what happened in the previous crisis. In Spain, in 2008, an economic there was an economic crisis, almost 5 million unemployed due to the real estate bubble. But this had great impacts and after effects in people and neighborhoods. The high level of unemployment, the change of roles in families, in many of the families, because generally speaking, the man was the one who would work outside of the home and now they stayed at home. The woman was working, two jobs, uh, anxiety, increase of medications. And with COVID, we've seen similar situations and some added situations due to the situation we've experienced with COVID the social and healthcare impact, fears, uncertainty, grieving, people who have grieved but have not been able to say goodbye to their relatives or loved ones, people who are stuck in this, not being able to say goodbye to the deceased, not being able to go to the wake, to the funeral service, not being able to be there at the last moments loss of jobs, many sectors of the population were impacted with employment regulation plans or schemes. 
many sectors have locked up, have closed, or sorry, have shut down. There was also a loss of freedoms uh, during the lockdown, many new social rules that we just took on and, and followed. Loneliness, many cases of loneliness. We see how many people stopped their, their, they cut their links with their families, their neighbors, and it's difficult for them now to get out of the home and establish relations. Changes in mood, anxiety, minor depression, increase of drug consumption, changes in the circadian uh, rhythms, uh, rest, activity. Uh, there were Due to the, the, the tension and having to be at, at home for so many hours, this increased family conflicts, violence. Now we are starting to see reports and conclusions of everything experienced. And we are seeing that during those months and years, there's been a high number of cases of violence. Families with which are burdened with cared because they took on uh, two, three work days, meaning uh, the job, child care, care for the dependent. There was also an increase in medications, healthcare centers, primary care, secondary care centers are overwhelmed. And we thought not because of COVID in and of itself, but the possibility, we thought of the possibility to create group spaces for, to, in order to create links in the community. We saw these unease, this common unease experienced by the population, which was not divided into different profiles or specific situations. It was, it happened to the general population. There are, for example, specific centers that work with specific parts of the population. For example, the cards work with people who consume drugs, the yeah, ice care for women in situations of gender-based violence. So there are many services that are specialized, but we saw that these unease went beyond these specific profiles. This unease was not due to specific uh, situations and characteristics. It was generalized, suffered by most of the population. This is why we had the need to have a methodology that could group together different profiles, different types of people who experience a similar situation. And then the three pillars that we had were community protection and promotion, forms of collective care, how we could take care of one another and reduce this general unease, and covering the most daily sources of unease. For example, family relations, sharing the ways I do things, maybe what I do can be useful for you ways to combat this general discomfort or upset. It's like what happened in the past in the squares of towns, in the parks, this, this general network to combat this discomfort. So what did we propose? We had three important pillars of work. One was loneliness, emotional upset, and the reduction of support networks. So we, what did we propose? To take individual situations into the collective, to generate a group space to facilitate recovery and empowering processes. This idea of I come here to this group, uh, go, going from I come here because I'm not well to, uh, what can I contribute to the group? So that we could all be people who contributed, who, who brought things to the group. It should be open and diverse, like a mini society with different profiles, different ages, professions, and it should mainly be an area of trust and a safe space. So the people who are in these groups, in these spaces can feel safe and welcomed and tucked in by the rest of the group. What goals do we have? Two always, improving situations of emotional upset and combating loneliness in situations of social isolation. Our track record as an entity in these spaces is that in 2012, we opened the first community group because when we were 
thinking of all of these, we started researching about good practices in other countries, in other communities. We got to know Fabian Claudio, a psychiatrist and a, and a psychologist who work in Elche. They have the multi-family work model. And we started training with them, and they brought us the models of other countries, in Argentina, for example, with large groups in psychiatric hospitals, in Finland, Sekula, with an open model where they worked on community and mental health in a different manner, in the United States as well, in the UK, so different countries where they were using very different working models with big and open groups. In 2012, we started the first group. We had 35, 40, 45 people in the group. Even sometimes we had to do two rounds of work to be able to reach all of the participants. There were also professionals of the network participating who were learning from this, from this model. In 2014, we transferred this methodology to services that ABD was already managing at the Family Support Center. We have four set centers in Madrid that we manage the specific intervention service. These are the services of the Bas Llobregat area. And now we're trying to implement this in Villanova as well. And we also have, we tried to transfer this to the SIRE, which is a service for care and information for immigrants, but it did not consolidate in the end. We've always proposed this, this openness and being able to implement this methodology in other services. In 2016, the first open group was created in Madrid. In 2017, we won the award of uh, quality and democratic innovation. This allowed us to open another group in La Marina in the municipal uh, library, Francesca Scandelli. It was an open space, a public facility. We did it in the exhibition room. And La Marina is a neighborhood here in Barcelona where there are high levels of poverty and social vulnerability. And so the role of participants was also very conditioned to life stories with a lot of discomfort, a lot of ill treatment, violence. In 2020, this group of La Marina was linked to community health and resources in the neighborhood so that it was well within the network. In 2020, COVID hit. We grouped the three groups into one, the pandemic hit, and the first week we said, what can we do? We cannot do anything on site. So we organized an online group that we did via Zoom. At the beginning, we had three differentiated spaces, Madrid, Barcelona, and Elche. Uh, we do this jointly with the colleagues at Elche. But we decided, well, why have three groups? And then in the second, third group, we decided to pull them together into one group. We were 40, 50 people. And this group, we maintained it during the entire lockdown period. We held it on a daily basis. After the round of applause that we did here in space at 8 p.m., everyone came out to the balconies to give a round of applause to healthcare professionals, to professionals, the essential professionals are supermarkets, all of those professions who were very exposed. So the Spanish population came out to the balcony and, and gave a round of applause. So after the applause, we met and we did this every day during the lockdown period from Monday to Friday. And when the de-escalation started here in Spain and it was possible to leave the, the home, we started doing it three days a week. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, also to, to to make sure that people could go back to their daily activities so they could go back out on the street. We agreed everything with them, and then we moved on to one day a week. And for a couple of months now, we've been doing it once every 15 days, but until December, it was on a weekly basis. There were so many participants. We were four uh, leaders. Well, I'll, I'll give you a bit more detail about this group later. In 2021, from the Town Council of Barcelona, they asked us to support some reference community spaces uh, set up by the, the Town Council of Barcelona, a pilot project in three different neighborhoods. We set up the spaces with them. The meetings were weekly. Uh, these spaces are still open until December. We've been with them, accompanying them. And it has been a very nice experience with the same methodology we used in our groups. In 2022, we went back to the on-site group 
in Barcelona and in 2023, what we have planned within this European LILA project is to create another two groups linked to the SIEs in San Felipe de Llobregat and Villanova. This is our track record. What's the intervention framework? In order to understand the working methodology, what we do within the multifamily groups, I thought it was important to understand where we started, where we stem from, how did we go from in uh, from one-on-one -on -one care to uh, and the entire uh, trajectory to reach this interpersonal and interfamily group approach. What is a one-on-one -on -one approach or a one-on-one -on -one intervention? A one-on-one -on -one intervention means an identified patient, a user, or however we want to call them, and one professional. And in this one-on-one -on -one relationship, we need to generate an environment of trust and confidence, a secure base. This person needs to be able to trust this professional, and this professional needs to be able to trust the user. And in this relationship, we we explore the relationship of this person with others through their representational model. So how this person experiences their family, their work, their health, this person in relation to others. And especially in this one-on-one -on -one relationship, the weight of knowledge, which is implicit in a way, lays on the professional. There is a demand and a response. This in a general manner. There are always exceptions, but in a general manner, this one-on-one -on -one dialogue happens and there's this demand and response. And you expect for the other person to provide a response as well and to provide support, help, assistance. In this relationship, the idea is to promote new emotional experiences, tools, resources that already happen in this one-on-one -on -one safe relation out of a out of these we we go from this to a family intervention systemic uh, reference models of family therapy when they work with a family normally it's one user plus their relatives and normally the demand is made by the identified patient there is a symptom something happened and the professional the family therapist gives an appointment to this person with their family and they work by interacting or by seeing the interaction between the different people who are part of this family family therapy its effectiveness is more than proven just like one-on-one -on -one interventions changes in any member of the family introduces members uh, changes in the identified patient and anyone else in the family any movement family therapy develops mainly the fact that the family is a system and since the family is a system each movement in any of the members of the system causes changes in the rest in the family structure and this system is divided up into subsystems. Subsystems we have the marriage, the brothers and sisters system, but any of the changes will introduce changes in the other subsystems. And the interventions are made simultaneously on supposedly asymptomatic family members. Uh, generally speaking, family therapists believe that when you bring the entire family and there is a symptom, a family symptom, something that is going on in this family environment, there is a lot more change potential if the entire family comes rather than if just one member comes. If just one member comes to the session, normally you only have the information that this person brings. But when you have the entire family in front of you, and one member of the family says, I feel this way, this is what's happening to me, and then you ask the rest how do they feel, they bring very rich information, and this information be even able to listen to it uh, so that everyone can listen to it means that you can change things. The weight of knowledge is more shared, but it's still a lot in the hands of the professional. We still have this demand and response. Many people who go to family therapy expect for the professional to give them an answer. Some introduce certain things, but generally speaking, family therapists make open questions. They have working hypotheses, and we work through questions, through movements, and through different techniques. And then we would move on to conventional or traditional group interventions. 
which deal with grouping together different persons with a professional. Normally, there is a specific topic, a specific profile to be dealt with, generally speaking. For example, we have groups for parents. Now they're a bit more mixed, but until a short while ago, most groups were for specific profiles. For example, groups for cocaine users, groups for heroin users, groups for family members, groups for women who are unemployed or looking for a job. So we have groups devoted to specific profiles. And generally speaking, in traditional groups, there is a specific structure and content that are developed. Some groups are more open with open dynamics, others have more basic dynamics, but generally speaking, there is a structure and a series of content. And the idea of the group intervention is to discover ourselves through others, thinking together with others, the path of the other person may be useful to me. It is also an economy of the means, and it's similar to the educational system. It's somewhat similar. The focus, is, the focus opens up as compared to a one-on-one -on -one intervention. There are more participants, a weight of knowledge. The, the, the professional has the, the burden of knowledge, but it's more diluted because there are more participants within a group space. And now we would take the leap towards an inter-family or multi-family space. And I like very much a description made by a participant of one of these spaces last year in town council who said, who are you? You accompany us, right? Because the role of the professional is a bit less clear. So what we have is a group of people with different sociocultural characteristics. And at ABD and CTI, we organize open groups. They are open to the population, people from different professions, backgrounds, various people come to this group. The idea is to generate a mini society. And the professionals take care of the feeling of the group, uh, they pay attention to any warning signs, but the, the weight of knowledge, the capacity is shared by everyone in this space. Some people come on their own, some people come with family members. Whenever they come with someone, with a neighbor, with a friend, we always say that whoever is in the space, they participate just like others. We are not here to company, to observe, to support. No, we are here as one more participant. And as such, you can participate, you can talk, and you can be a part of the group just like the rest. And these are spaces where there's no specific content. The content is brought to the session by the participants. Each session is different, and in each session, we work on different aspects, whatever they want to bring to the session. And multiple interactions uh, contribute new perspectives of reality. They allow participants to identify their family constellations in the here and now of the group process. There are people who identify things that happen to them based or on their relationship with other persons they did not know who are in the group. They can relive their own dynamics via the other people. And this means that each of them can identify roles, behaviors, for example, spontaneous insights. It happens a lot in these groups that when someone says something that happens to them, other people connect to that. Oh, this happens to me too. Or from the opposite side, oh, what you're saying about your mom, it happens to me as a mom. So from this difference in roles, we can all generate a reflexive dialogue. Oh, maybe the reason is this one and not that one. This, this change happens. And it has a unique potential to stimulate reflection and mentation 
capacities. And we'll talk about this later. Being able to understand my behavior and that of others as something different. And I'll give you an example of this later. So this is the leap from a one-on-one -on -one intervention to a multi family intervention. So we can see how we add components until we reach this model. And I'll talk a bit more about the reference theoretical models, and then we can open some time for the Q&A. Yes, perfect, Claro. For now, there are no questions. And since we were planning on a break at around 11, maybe when you finish this section, we can we can have a break. OK, great. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. We continue now with the theoretical reference models, which I would like to do now because it's very much linked to what we just saw. The theoretical models that support these types of information are attachment theory. I will tell you a bit about the main authors of attachment theory later. But from attachment theory, what is researched and discovered is how early relationships and experiences from zero to three years, zero to six years of age impact and how relationships establish later, how your relationship with your main caregiver impacts your social and emotional development later. And we see this in, in groups. Another model that I talked to you about is systemic family therapy to go deeper into uh, the relations with others and their impacts, the family as a system and the system as a whole, how each member of the family, how each movement can affect the rest of systems. And things that happen to us as individual members are very much linked to things that happen in the relationship with our family, a nuclear or extended family and how the relationships within the family mean that I behave in one way or another. Group therapy, it is the foundation as well because we organize groups, so group therapy cannot be missed. And it is also a bit of behavior analysis, the analysis of behavior in a group and this effect, this impact of group therapy, which in the end is genuine to other spaces within a group. Group therapy, some things happen that would not happen in other contexts, such as the roles that take place within the groups, the feeling of belonging generated by the group itself, cohesion amongst participants, the mirror effect, what one does or how does it move me or touch me. And this cannot happen in other spaces because you do not have this collective, these different ways of doing things. There's people who are coexisting with me in a specific situation, which is, in this case, a group session. Therapy integration from the application of different techniques, methodologies, I'll show you some later. And finally, social constructionism. Social constructionism, mainly, we, we take in, into account mainly because from this approach, we generate meaning and mainly knowledge. We all think, reflect, and generate new knowledge, shared values. Within these spaces, we generate shared values that we build amongst ourselves through joint construction. And this construction means that oftentimes previous conceptions, misconceptions, myths, they break down and we generate new knowledge, new concepts, which are the foundation of sharing. They are agreed upon amongst all of us. And then, since this workshop is specific for situations of people who experience or have experienced gender-based violence, I would like to say that for these situations, we need to take into account multifactorial work mo working models, specifically the ecologic framework. The WHO says that violence is the result of the reciprocate and complex 
actions amongst individual relational, social, cultural, and environmental factors. So we have this model as a framework as well to understand that violence in the end is not something that happens due to a specific cause. There are multiple causes that coexist and how in the end, the, well, the ecologic framework is a bit like the different systems and how the violent situation impacts, for example, the family of origin, the environment, work, how different systems are impacted. And yes, well, multifactorial to understand situations of violence and ecologic to understand the impact this has on the women suffering for the, from this violence. I'm showing here some authors and I will talk about a few concepts, but these are authors linked to the theories that I mentioned. Attachment theory was developed mainly by Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth, and they mainly developed four types of attachment, safe attachment, anxious ambivalent attachment, avoidance and disorganized forms of attachment, avoidant and disorganized, just to classify the different types of attachment in early relationships between the main caregiver and the baby. And the impacts of this relationship in the way in which we establish relationships in the future. Mary Ainsworth also developed an experimental procedure, strength situation. On YouTube, you can find videos about how you can visualize each of the types of attachment and how the main caregiver reacts because many cases, in many cases, this is the mother and you see how the mother reacts, how the child reacts in the presence of the mother. There are examples linked to the four types of attachments. Maybe while well, they're in a room, uh, you see how the mom is with the baby. The mom walks out of the room and you see how the child reacts to the mom walking out. They cry or they're calm. Each child reacts differently and how they react when the mother comes back. If the mother can calm them down or if they are very angry or if they are just impassive. And you see how each of those establishes a different type of attachment that has been built and they will be linked to how the person will develop as an adult. And attachment theory brings a very interesting concept, that of mentation. How do I understand my own behavior and that of others as something differentiated? For example, yesterday we had an in-person group meeting and one of the women who participates has three daughters. The third daughter is adopted and she believes that ever since she adopted her at the age of two, she's making her life impossible. Her daughter does not want to relate with them. And I apologize for the wording, but she says her daughter wants to fuck her over and and, and she's out to get her. So the mentation level of this mother is very low. She does not understand that the behavior of her daughter may be caused by other situations. She believes that she does it in order to, to, to bother her, to, to come at her. But in the end, we try to articulate how this mother can get to understand that the thinking and development of her daughter are related to her daughter. Not everything the other one does is done to upset you or is related to what you do. So these are differentiated processes. We also have systemic, the general systems therapy or systemic therapy. We have the Watzlawick method, which develops the theory of human communication, very important within the general systems therapy. And he talks about five axioms. The main one is that it's impossible not to communicate. He says we always communicate. And there's a difference between digital and analogic communication. Digital would be with words and analogic would be with gestures, how I set my, my behavior. There's also a difference between symmetric and complementary communication. He always he also says that communication is always within a context. 
and yeah, he talks from that perspective. And then Bowen is a psychiatrist, and I include him here under general systemic because he develops theoretical concepts related to differentiation or how when we grow up, when we stop being babies, we stop having this dependency on our primary caregivers. Little by little, we differentiate ourselves from our caregivers. And when this differentiation doesn't happen, what happens there? And what may be happening, maybe one of the two parties is facilitating or blocking or facilitating too much in this interrelation, which, well, in the end, in the end if we have a uh, healthy differentiation, we'll, we'll be able to differentiate ourselves and generate healthy relations with others. And Minuchin, who is one of the founders of General Systemic Therapy, he published several books, and many of them are linked to the family structure. The structure, what happens within families, coalitions, triangulations, coalitions, things that happen within family dynamics. Also mapping, he incorporates specific techniques such as circular questions. We use this a lot in groups. And group therapy, we also have several authors here. I'll be quick here. Fox talks about the mirror effect in, in group therapy. I will tell you about this later. Yalom, who goes along the same lines as Carl Rogers. He talks from a more philosophical and humanist point of view. From the point of view of existence, he's a positivist. He trusts human beings. He trusts uh, changes and possibilities. He has trust in them. And also the meaning of emotions. What is the meaning? Roger talked a lot about what meaning we attach to our emotions, not if the emotion is good or bad, but what it means for us. And Patrick de Mare develops his interventions from, from London, very much linked to large groups, groups of 50, 60 people. This is very interesting too. Bromfen Brenner, I set him aside here a bit, but he mainly talks about the ecologic model and how different, how do we coexist among systems, microsystem, mesosystem, exosystem, from our family of origin, the, our environment, our neighborhood, at work, how we open up and how we relate in these different systems. And very specific of multifamily and interfamily interventions, we have Jorge García Badraco, who developed all of his work in Buenos Aires, Argentina, at the Psychiatric Hospital of La Borda. There are videos of his interventions on YouTube, very interesting videos. He passed away, but he left an impressive legacy of how to intervene in books and, and articles, and he talks about a concept that I like very much, healthy virtuality. So all of those people we care for, we have around us, they all have something healthy. And sometimes it's difficult for us to, to see it. They all have capacities and some some something related to healing. And when we get to see this healthy character in persons, this is when we can try and get things to improve. When we get, you get to see this, this capability in the person, this is when you get this relationship to cause an improvement. And he also talked about the appreciative look. How can we see this healthy virtuality in people and how can we try and break down what happens to see light, to see light in people? And then from the interfamily, Sekula in the interfamily model. He worked in Finland, maybe in psychiatry, but in the area where he lives, he lived. There was there were high levels of schizophrenia and mental health problems, very severe situations. So he started a process which is completely innovative because in the end he talks about transparency. He incorporates open dialogue. So in his center, for example, there are no coordinations where the person things are happening to are not present. He has a documentary as well that you can watch, and there are signs throughout the institution 
saying we don't talk about the person if the person is not present. We have this, this habit of coordinating, drafting reports and, and writing histories without checking or validating with the person. Look, I'm writing this report. What do you think? I'm doing this for this or that reason. Well, there they work in a completely different manner. Nothing is done without the person being present or the family being present to be able to give consistency and transparency because in the end the opposite may generate paranoia things happen but they're not even aware of them they don't even know what's happening so their processes and procedures for example of withdrawal of custody and families don't even know what is happening they're not up to date this is getting better the fact that the persons are the true protagonists of the processes is something that is being incorporated, but I think we still have a long way to go in this field. And just as a, an overview, unique features of group intervention that Yalom uh, develops, the therapeutic or curative specific factors of the group, generating hope, universality, conveying information, altruism, developing socialization techniques, imitative behavior, catharsis, recap, recapping existential factors, cohesion of the group, interpersonal learning. These are the basic ones. And there's something very important that we work on here. Group, the group matrix, the, the foundation. Participants who are a stable foundation who welcome new participants. They are like the, the basic fabric. The rest will come, but there's like a matrix that sustains the space. And the mirror effect, referring to the unawares imitation of patterns of others, as if the group were a hall of mirrors. What I see in others touches me, and I react to that, and this produces changes from me towards others and from others towards me. Now, specific aspects of how we work with Carol. Am I... Over time. Well, I was just wondering whether you wanted to have the break now. No, it's just that. It's just this slide. Okay, perfect. Then we'll finish with this slide. There is one question. Perfect. And then we'll go on to the break. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So we were... I'm showing this slide to try and understand specific aspects of situations that take place within groups where there's gender-based violence. We attach a lot of importance to assessment of the risk, what situation this person is experiencing and how far the risk goes, what is the perception of this person on the ill treatment received, the degree of awareness, what phase they're in, whether there are clinical symptoms or not, the scope of our intervention, because sometimes we have the detected cases in which we have not been able to accompany or we've done it in a more peripheral manner. But there are women who need a more specific intervention and a nearer accompaniment, and we have referred them to specific services that we've deemed more appropriate for the situation. And also the safety of the person, whether there is, whether the situation is safe for this person and the people dependent on her, children, people who depend on her, and her own safety. So the work framework in this situation is extended to the group, but we have this, this mental work map and we always contextualize violence. Violence is never justified in the group. There are no causes that can justify violence. Violence is a crime. Violence is never justified. So we start from this foundation. We also establish the fact that violence is, an, is a relationship of asymmetry. There is a power balance. There's context as well. There is prejudice, false beliefs, stereotypes. And we want to dismantle these beliefs. We want to dismantle these mandates. 
these stereotypes within the violence framework, because oftentimes maybe a woman starts saying something about violence and what the rest of the group says, what they contribute. Well, we, we work a lot on demystifying all of this and contextualizing what is a situation of violence, what happens in a situation of violence. That we cannot justify whatever happens, no one should attack us. And the next step we take and is to connect with the self, with their own desire, with themselves, not others, but them. What do they desire? What do they want? Respect, boundaries, to what extent someone can say or do certain things to us. And there are boundaries, there are limits. No one can... People cannot treat, it, treat us a certain way. And then there is a, a bond with the rest of participants of the group. And we can experience then that there are other types of relations possible, other types of effective relationships possible. And this is seen within the group from an intersectional approach as well as to how different inequalities coexist within the woman and also an empowerment-based approach. This we already worked on in groups, but in the cases where we detect violence or where a service is already working and they recommend these group spaces, we continue to work in empowerment. Margaret defined it as, defined it as the process in which women improve their capacity to set up, to configure their own lives and their environment and evolution of their awareness of themselves and their efficacy in social interactions. And this manifests through a sense of safety and security and a vision of the future. She expresses it as the change from within is not a concession. It's something that Others do not have to tell you to do it. It's something that you develop from within. And we see this in the groups. And in groups, when we see that a person dares to talk about something that happened to them, abuse, ill treatment, their partner or their family of origin, we see how other people also dare talk. The fact that one person verbalizes something is a support for the rest of the group who become free to talk about their own experience, past or present. And if the person says something, tells us something, it's because they perceive they are in a safe space. And then the others, when they speak up as well, they feel sustained by the group. They feel supported by the groups. It's like a group of 25 people is supporting you. At the beginning, I thought, how is a person going to say something, to, to, to tell us something so intimate in a group of 25 or 30 people? But it happens in group interventions rather than in one-on-one -on -one sessions when the focus is placed on that person here with 25, 30 persons, even afterwards when I tell them, oh, how nice that you were able to, to say it. And they say, no, it was easier because there are so many people around me that I just put it on the table and it's there, it's out. And then there are other people who talk as well and they feel supported. It's, not, it's like I'm not alone in this. It happens to other people too and it's very freeing. And it's a space where there is no confusion, there is no mix-ups. You can talk about what is happening there in the group. And you don't justify what is happening. You are able to discuss it in a free manner. Being able to, to be, to be free, free of the burden that you were Caring. Madaraco introduced a term for this, which is the dilemmatic situation. It generates a dilemma. In order to be okay myself and to be able to free myself from this burden, to unburden myself, I have the dilemma that if I tell it, if I verbalize it, I am blaming people around me who I love. If I verbalize that my father abused me, 
la lealtad que yo le guardo a él como padre. I pero también la lealtad am que yo le guardo a mi madre, por ejemplo. Going against the loyalty in a way towards my father and the loyalty towards my mother because maybe my mother didn't do anything to to protect me. So this dilemma means that it's very difficult for us to express ourselves. And when we see that people become free, when women become free to 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 talk about what happened to them, the rest of the group becomes free as well. And we would stop here, Carlota, uh, if you want to ask me the question. Yes, perfect, Carol. The question is, I think it's someone who's not from, uh, living in Spain because the question is in English. I'm just giving you some context because they ask, how do you attract the participants to attend the group? Are the participants referred by the services or they enter in the group for their choice. Thank you, Carlota. So they come from the two pathways. So some people know the group because of a friend, for example, and they just come in. They have friends or people they know who are in the group and they come through them. And other people are referred from services, uh, social services centers, primary care centers. Many, many doctors refer their patients to us. And here in Barcelona, we have the role of the mental well-being specialists who are in primary care centers and they create this bond between community and healthcare centers and they recommend the service as well and later when we continue with the methodology i have a, a, a map where i can give you more detail about uh, how we do it the records that we use the guidelines perfect caro how are you doing uh, are you okay on time? Because we'll be finishing at 12.30. Is it okay to have a 10-minute break now? 10 minutes? Yeah, that's perfect. Yes, because I want to show you some videos later. I, I Well, with the all of the mix-up with the presentation, um, I wasted some time. Is it okay to stop for 10 minutes? Yes, perfect. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Vale, pues empezamos, ¿no? O... Sí, mira, si quieres, a, había, reanudamos. Había una pregunta, dice, preguntan si esta metodología es similar al, eh, como a los grupos de, como de, de feministas de self-awareness. Eh, no, sé si no, no sé cómo funcionan Yo no los conozco. Grupos. Yo tampoco, no sé cómo funcionan esos grupos. No sé, en Madrid, por ejemplo, y en Barcelona sí que hay comisiones de género donde se juntan muchas mujeres, ¿no? Pero más con cuestiones más de incidencia política. ¿No? ¿Será algo así, a lo mejor? Puede ser, podría ser. Me lo preguntan en inglés, no sé si es algo que se implemente más en otros países. Yo no lo había escuchado como metodología, así como claro, otra. Yo en los grupos que he trabajado de comisiones de género en, en Madrid, iba como participante, como como una más, no hay ninguna conducción, no hay una metodología concreta de trabajo, sino que todas ahí sí que es una relación totalmente horizontal y entre todas trabajamos pues, en las cuestiones, ¿no? por ejemplo en la reforma de la ley del aborto pues entre todas decidimos qué queremos hacer en relación a esto, se convoca una huelga, se convoca una manifestación, se hace un poco de ahí, y luego en los barrios también se hace como mucho trabajo a nivel feminista ¿no? de, más de incorporarlo en el día a día, ¿no? en grupos de mujeres que se juntan para reflexionar, para hablar, para actividades concretas también. Pero eso sí que es una relación como 100% horizontal. Somos mujeres que nos juntamos para pensar, para hacer, ¿sabes? Así sí. que en eso es diferente, porque aquí sí que hay una metodología de trabajo, si hay una conducción, si hay una manera de hacer concreta. Las profesionales Totalmente. tenemos un rol más horizontal pero no es 100% horizontal porque al final nosotras somos profesionales y ellas son esas personas que vienen al grupo son participantes, ¿sabes? Yo cobro y ellas no, o sea, ya desde ahí, o sea, obtiene mucho de su vida personal y familiar, ya desde la mía, los ejemplos que yo quiera poner, ¿no? También, pero no es igualitaria. Totalmente. Entonces, También preguntan si los, si los grupos son eh, mixtos sí. o no. Sí, los grupos son mixtos y mixtos en todos los sentidos, mixtos de, de género, mixtos de edad, mixtos de profesiones, son como muy variados. Bueno, yo voy intentando compartir so, un rato si hay alguna cosa más. I'll try to share. We have to wait a little bit. There was someone asking. 
los grupos, como comentamos, que, And son, que no son no mixed, que son no mixtos, no que, mixed. que son mixtos, perdón, <risa> eh, eh, preguntan si, si los perpetuadores, digamos, si los agresores... ¿Are the perpetrators included in these groups? Pues, eh, las mujeres que... Well, women that already are in a treatment process and detection processes, there are maybe together with a group. So, if they do not come, much better. But the intervention will be to verbalize some things and sometimes they won't feel comfortable. But in some cases where this previous intervention was not there, where we detected the violence inside the group, where the framework shows that so I do not recommend when there is an egalitarian system, it is more uh, symmetrical. And I think that, I think it uh, was complicated. Maybe the process and the reparation process that these uh, women need so we also accompanied and we uh, screened to know the resources that they needed. But uh, sometimes couples, they do not come. And uh, well, with the sometimes they come back to the group. But it's always a very tricky context. Uh, it is a very open group. There are uh, situations uh, where they come to the group due to other reasons, maybe relationships with the kids, what they suffered in the job. And sometimes they come as a couple because they leave everything together. And inside the dynamics, the first session, they realize that, well, they do not, uh, they have a lot of tricky things. So we must protect everyone at risk. And uh, always, always with these specific cases, we talk with them, we have a contact, because inside the mechanics of the group, always with the risk that this will uh, entail to them. Yes, absolutely, Carol. Okay, we can start. All right, now I'd like to show you what are the methodologies that we have inside. In order to share this with you, I'm going to put on a video, Carlota. Well, you have the screen. I think that you have stopped sharing the screen for me to uh, share the screen. Uh, can I try to open mine? Let's see if there is no problem. I think that it's possible. Can you listen to me? Hello, are you there? Well, my group, can you hear that? Due to the economic crisis, we realized that the economic troubles were also social problems. This created conflicts in the family, acquaintances, isolation, a bad mood. So the things went from the individuals towards society. We from ABS, we counted that it was very important to offer a social answer. This is the feeling that we had. Well, uh, we needed to find new solutions to put together different people from different situations and in the end create new networks to share and to build together. Maybe what everybody says makes you to realize that you have more points in common. And this is the last drop of the glass. This is the last spill. And this really triggers a problem because in the past you had many other tr troubles. We came together and from that on, the dialogue was more easy. So we put everything into context and you were able to put some order to your feelings to give them a name and a label 
and also to understand what you suffered and uh, just the sharing and uh, being there you forget and when you are out of there you feel uh, more released we don't talk about the others we do not judge anybody well we told them what they have to do and we talk from what we feel what we are experiencing what we have in the group stays in the group it is uh, confidential uh, what stays in the, happens in the group stays in the group through this boy i understood this story so suddenly when i shared my story people they were so close to me i felt so well right so in the end was something that really released me when uh, someone starts crying and uh, another one says you want me to hug you because in the end this is something that you really need you need someone to give you a hug from the outside yes it is worse there i stood up and i give him a hug yes and everybody was uh, surprised and just to tell them that i was like her and it's always easy to get rid of the situation yes you realize that something it is in the middle of the jungle of barcelona and it can be also a silent space a calm space and uh, i realized that when i wake up i didn't know one time was the subjective problems it is an existing problem but the way we manage feelings really change a lot and yes that story of life it is our baggage and the past to face new situations that will be very useful and also we can see new perspectives and this will have and also to create new binds and community and to multiply by a thousand what i'll do on an individual uh, way well all together we can make that possible Well, that movie we picked at because as we won the award, we had a little bit of money and we could do it with the participants. I really get moved when I see it because if you were aware about the histories of life and the amount of changes that we had, the amount of... Okay, let's resume. All the participants that appear in the video, they belong to this group. This is the group that we had on site. It is a group that uh, works. We have uh, 12 members. The average is lower. It was a very big group, 34, 40 people. We reached to be 45. The average now it's a 10. Many people wanted to be on site, despite we had an online connection. It was not possible to reach the same levels that we had before the pandemics. And the maximum was 12 participants. Every Wednesday, every fortnight, from half past four to six in Gracia. We have uh, family members, individuals. We are two uh, conductors, myself, and Elisa, and the main agents, and uh, RTPAP, the CAP, the social services, health services, Laris, the CSMA, which is a mental health center for adults. We are in the network inside the community table of the neighborhood of Gracia. It is a project for the entity. And that's why we always are keeping up all the activities. So it's kind of an ambition that we have to be on site. Then we had the second group, the online group. It is a bigger group. Today, we have around 25, 30 people. Uh, we reach to 40 every fortnight since January from 8 to 9, 3 p.m. 
On Wednesdays, the participants are individuals, families, uh, people from different uh, regions, people from Madrid, from Barcelona, from Valencia and Elche, as it happened during the pandemics. We kept that many people from other countries such as Chile, Peru and Colombia. Today, we have the three conductors. We had the four and right now we are three because I'm working in other projects, so it was not possible to be to be there present. And also uh, we had many other professionals that got the training in a multifamily model that know very well the uh, project. We are working together with the LT group. Two of our conductors come from LT and another one it's from ABT. We were two and two, but this year, well, it not, was well, not possible to me. What I wanted to tell you, it is what really happens. This change that we experienced since we went from the online to on the presence, well, the intensity varies whilst the lockdown change. The online group allowed us something that the on the presence groups did not have. This is just a comment that I want to make. We were able to be together with different regions. It really unified everybody from all the country, which is so fruitful. Uh, but there is like a proximity, which was not uh, possible. It was so impressive when we all were connected and we were inside people's homes. Hey, everyone from home, you are inside other people's homes. You could see the pictures, the books, the shelves, the rooms. So you could have, right, an idea about that person. And that's where he lives, she lives. So you could see the dog, the cat, the couple. We, as conductors, we always invited the couples for them to be in the group, the kids to be in the group, children to participate. More and more people were participating more than on an on-site session, right? It would be tricky to be in presence, so it's always great to be from home. There were people on their pajamas or with a wardrobe or many people, well, uh, ate a popcorn and she always ate a popcorn. I think that she ate sunflowers. It's, so it was so a cool down uh, atmosphere. Everyone was uh, chilling out, you know, it was opening a new door. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible to know each other. But there are many other people that told us that they began on the online group and they were not able to keep up the pace because it was very cool. I don't know, it was cold for them. They didn't felt the warm in the on presence uh, group. And many other people, they were not able to connect online because maybe they did not have a computer because they were elderly people or they were not able to use the cell phones because they do not see other people's faces. We are always working from Zoom, from a cell phone, you only see the face of those who are talking. But whether you have a computer or not, to see 25 people at a glance, you didn't have the global uh, perspective of the group. It was not comfortable for them. They didn't have any kind of access to this uh, kind of proximity. And many people, they didn't have the possibility to get the apps because many people, well, some of them, they didn't have a computer. It's quite interesting to see that on the online group, we did not talk about. Sometimes we talk about COVID, only 15 minutes, and we talk about many other things. We talked about uh, conflicts, we talked as well about uh, bad behaviors, things that happened, you know, that our daily activities, it was very interesting. It is very interesting in the end. And uh, the third, the third space that I had to comment about are the reference spaces. Those are spaces where an initiatives of the Community Action Department of Barcelona City Council, working at the level of the Social Service Department and the strategy to fight uh, loneliness. And there are three pilot projects in three Barcelona neighborhoods. The first one in Guinardo, another one in Clot, and another one in Coil Salud by Carca three different boroughs in Barcelona, and they wanted to create a similar spaces that the ones that we have from ABT. So I was the reference uh, individual. I was in the three groups, and I trained 
and I accompanied several professionals from social services and uh, primary care centers and also different community reference people uh, through all the methodology for them to include this way to intervene. These three spaces are opened and the conductors are those that accompany this initial process. We were for two years with the process and they are still working and they are spaces for neighbors uh, that they can be together, they can share many things and the three goals because they do have a clear goal how to manage emotions, also collective counseling, how to convey information amongst neighbors, and also to launch new projects. Once we detect a collective need, such as many people, they are asking and telling that there are not enough uh, schools in the neighborhood how to counsel, how to coach, how to count with people and pe persons that, uh, well, people that have already started initiatives. In one of the projects, we wanted to have a um, solidarity refrigerator. Many other people came from other neighborhoods, how to start with a solidarity refrigerator, uh, also food. Do people eat well? Are there any food troubles uh, in the neighborhood? There were some people that had a dietist, and uh, the dietist was invited to the neighborhood for us to see how can we improve our habits, food habits. All these spaces are always uh, connected from the outside to the inside, from the inside to the outside. We have many other social services and also health services working together with us. We did have uh, group spaces. We have a single group to reflect on what happened in all the groups, but also when conducting, how did you feel? Uh, when that happened, how did you include the questions from a methodological perspective? And also we had a group where different professionals and agents that belong to the network, and we rethought about improving these spaces and also to spread the message, to work with other people's needs, and uh, all the uh, engines are diluted. And the main driving group, the, the first group, uh, made that participants together with professionals uh, once every two months, they think about the space. Is it working or not? Are groups working? Therefore, uh, neighbors are the main figures and the characters of the space. So we sit together and we think together. And then the fourth space. Well, we do have this idea in mind. We do have uh, multifamily groups, uh, always uh, with the CSD specialized intervention groups and gender violence groups uh, here in San Felipe de Yubrogat and another one in Villanova inside the Lila European project. We will do it in public spaces such as libraries, civic centers, uh, different neighbor uh, facilities, and we will convey the message to uh, women suffering gender violence, but also to the family members, new couples, friends, uh, children, and we want to open this intervention to the context that they experience in this situation. All right, what about the methodology right now? Well, how do we work? inside our groups. Let's see, what are the main features? Many of them we already mentioned. Well, there is not a specific profile. We do have people from different ages. Uh, it is a free access. They come from recommendation, uh, professionals. It is an spontaneous. Uh, I do not work. They bring. It is a flexible space. We can work about any other situation that they want to use and deal with. We work together. It is a proximity space. 
and how uh, through the resources that we have and also the tables and the platforms that we have. It is a service for continuity. That's important. It is a space that works all the year. And we began in August and in Christmas. And it is an important uh, element. Many people come on a stable way and also uh, they come back because they are aware about the group is there, how it works. People can come uh, direct way or by recommendation. We talk about recommendations, but we don't talk about deriving them because it, it really implies. So I do remember that the uh, director of uh, talks about sending to uh, them to get lost. It's like you are sending someone to a place. I think that we must accompany them. And when deriving this really includes uh, some proceedings that we witnessed uh, that were not needed. And in reality, what we really want, it is that those that have interest to participate in the group to do it in a free way. So they can call, uh, they have a phone, or if they have any information, but we really invite them for them to come the first uh, to discover uh, how do they feel. Is it useful or not? We do have a flyer and we send like twice uh, every year. Uh, it's when in September and in January we start. And also, well, it is uh, every fortnight uh, people get uh, have some ideas and we try to have the uh, calendar and not to suffer right, and to see what really happens. And uh, also people coming, uh, they come 10 minutes or more and also we offer them and also the presence and the participation can be regular in a continuous manner, or maybe they come or not come, they go back and forth. As from the registry levels, we do have some registries. People that come from the first time, they fill up a file, it's a registry, where they have uh, some demographic data and uh, some scales and to make this uh, and we do have a, a follow-up of the sessions every morning if there isn't something that we are lacking and then also how to frame everything it's like a mantra of an intervention that well we repeat all the participants together it's not us we always talk from uh, myself i speak about my own experience i talk about my own intervention and well we cannot offer any piece of recommendation or to judge anybody also also confidentiality everything is confidential what happens in the group stays in the group this is a recommendation and uh, we offer a lot of importance it's like uh, something very, very safe, but this level of confidentiality, if there is any risk, and if we consider that there is uh, something and we need to inform to other services, we can always skip up this uh, issue of confidentiality. If there is any situation that can go against people health, well, we, due to our ethics, we must inform, we must accompany and the resources, and well, and then we offer a piece of recommendation. We use like three sessions to see if it's useful or not, because every session it's so difficult and different. The minimum uh, amount of three sessions will offer you the possibility and also the interaction of the group because well it comes only one or it comes a complete family you know every uh, space it's opened and it's very diverse every possibility of every participant you know individually they come with a family it's very different so what really happens in the disinteraction we can see that there is a process of the mind something that uh, do not happen and 
the place where I talk from, as I know many other, uh, and the roads of other people, and these interactions, for example, a uh, group example that sometimes happens, there are some people that do not have kids, and uh, well, they other people that uh, they uh, compare themselves more. And in some sessions, uh, there are mothers that verbalize, and I some tell them 40 times this and that, and kids, they never answer to me, so I prepare uh, the food, and they do not eat. So this is the complaint, the relationship that they have with the kids. And other people with the groups, well, I, uh, well I'd like to have some people to share this and that. And there are always the kids, right? that uh, they always say, well, my mother asked me 40 times this, I'm exhausted. She always are asking me the same. So how to make other people understand? Or maybe I ask them many, many times the same question. There are kids that really verbalize. And uh, sometimes I'm so tired that I don't eat. You know, very specific examples, whether, uh, it is they are offering new information that you didn't think about it and also they are living some specific uh, situations and how do you feel as an individual when the, you are asking 200 times and you ask 200 times because you didn't ask the previous one so this is in the nat in a natural di dynamic and what about the registries that we use? This is the registry. Well, you have the contact, the email, the, if we have to, there is a session or not, how it is going to know about the space in a professional manner. And also there are other social and demography questions, uh, the kind of uh, home, the main activity, and many other questions, and then the impact assessment, which are questions a little bit more related about the feelings of the individual and also data protection, okay? You'll see that we do have a database where there are loads of columns. So then you will have all data there and you will explore those data and you can have different assessments and also different opinions of the people's profile. Was it useful or not? You know, the sessions, we do have a roadmap and a notebook that tries to re uh, conclude the session, the date of the session, uh, how are we, and also the amount of people and professionals of the network that were in the group, what were the topics that we worked in the session, and uh, what's the relationship between uh, parents and kids, and also the broader family. So everything we put it there as a general topic and aspects that we must take into account. If there is any doubt, or let's say, I don't know if someone has a doubt, how do um, how am I going to write everything? If someone says, well, as for this topic, I want to talk it because I want to go deeper with this regard. Well, and in the next session, we do it, right? And we can talk about it. And also, the, uh, we create like this diagram to see where people were seated and the relationship between groups or alliances. All right. And also the assessment. As for the assessment, we have the previous and the first session before the session. They have to fill out the questionnaire, which is also, well, if something says no, uh, you have to include the data and confidentiality. We have a one in the first session, and as it is an open group, well, many, many times we thought about the assessment and also with the public health agency that we developed together with Marina, 
well, we realize about the population and also different proposals and so on and so forth. So as we do not have the frequency on the safety, so we had to go uh, through a previous situation where has been a problem the first session and the second session and the third and the 10th session. So we will be able to see about the changes and the sixth one, we will be able to assess the adherence. And also in the 10th, we will be able to assess uh, some changes that were uh, more emotional or the relationships and so on and so forth. As we do not have this because we are not uh, completing the assistance and the participation, we cannot assess when is the 10th session. So we were together with some people that thought about this assessment together with us, and we thought about the possibility to have a two specific dates and to see the frequency, how many sessions do we have, do we have less than six sessions, 10 and more, and also to get through the tests and also to see the first session, if there was an impact or a change between the first or the last one, between the session that we considered that usually it is December and June, where do we have something that um, allows us to make a break? So December, beginning of June, questions related with this impact assessment, the amount of frequency that you feel alone, do you feel alone about uh, the rest of people? So this is the Okla scale. Do you feel alone? Do you feel great? Do you have any troubles when talking with other people? Do you have any information resources or are you participating in some activities? And also, do you want to do new things? How do you feel? And also, also, we have a satisfaction uh, anonymous to assess the relationship between the first one and the last one. We must identify the different, and we can codify with a name, a surname, and a code that will allow us and help us to see what's the reality. And as for satisfaction, we make more questions related with if the, it was useful or not, and they felt great, or they felt, let's say, improvement. Since they left, did they recommend something, right? That would be the perspective. What else? Okay. I don't know if we will speak about data or maybe we can share the video. Maria, are you there? It is a video that uh, has to do with a documentary that we did together with um, our colleagues from Elche. And it's a documentary related with this. Uh, uh, it is interfamiliar uh, therapy. So family therapy made together. They did it from Melche, we collaborated, and uh, something very interesting that happened in the group, we want you to know the opinion of all the participants. Well, Maria is the therapy conductor. You know, Counting with someone that is able to manage the group and knows how to make you speak, to look this about this. Yes, I think that someone asked me and I start talking and I realized that it was necessary to talk and I realized that I felt so bad because I thought that the problems were not able to be shared by anyone. So to be there allowed me to see that now. I didn't know why it was here. I was not aware. With time, in a very few moments, I realized that we had 
problems at home, problems with my daughter, and I understood that the reason why I was coming was there. And right now, I know that I'm here to me. I am the one that has the problem. And this is something that the therapy shows. With me, there will be no change. To be together with some people that are suffering the same problem or really helps a lot to see that the professional it's always there and many other people with experience really helps we do have a therapist from other people but it's always very difficult once you are able to speak and when you are bad nobody well can criticize you and really opened me So, sometimes you don't realize, sometimes someone said something that you don't like it, and then you say, well, I'm doing the same. Nobody likes what do we have to do, and to say what do we have to do. What's really painful, it is what you learn from, uh, an experience of you and the others, that's beautiful. I do think that in the end, we are uh, made of a very important and strong family. That's important to talk about ourselves and from the I, and we do respect without judging. Maybe listening to some stories of the others really makes you meditate because you do not only come here to for you, there is a moment that you want and knowing the others you realize that you are recommending something that you are applying so it's like a small family yes therapy really helped me to make people be aware i'm always complaining but being so different because we do have a diagnosis and there are different people, different situations, different ages. As we are a group, you see different versions. As she said, you see your mother's version, your kid's version. Once you go to a professional uh, office, it is you and your world everything is so cold but i believe that here it's more human and you believe and you belong to something bigger well that's all we will offer you more many of you uh, are asking me about but many of the people I'd like some of the elements of the it was in one of the options of the sharing screen. Okay, let's see if it works. Let's see some of the uh, assessment uh, figures. Well, we talk about the adherence. This is the on-site and the presential group. 47% uh, uh, to 10 sessions, so 10, 40%, a high level of uh, people that have a great adherence when we have a presence, uh, uh, the situations, they change. But uh, there is not a maintenance, let's say, around um, five, six sessions. So in the end, there is not a binding strong binding and the expectations 90 percent they say it's more useful than expected 100 percent they will recommend the sessions to other people and also it's useful to detect uh, problems to be listened by a group it's different than being listened by an individual not feeling alone to learn about other people's experience and also to be more trustworthy and uh, 
to trust myself, also to listen to the others and to know about other people's behaviors allows you to understand yourself. This is the online group. There is quite a big adherence. As you can see, 25% come more than 20 sessions, around 20, uh, 27 point five percent come to seven ten sessions so there is a high percentage of people around five ten sessions in our group and a high percentage uh, that comes from more than 10 sessions and uh, 20 and 20 sessions 25 percent which is quite a lot and after the before and the after how do they feel and we had a survey uh related with uh, some of the symptoms that we detected in the group, and we made an online survey. We can see the difference between the beginning situation and the final situation of the individual. Okay. Uh, we had one year of uh, group uh, therapy online. As for the fatigue, there were higher levels at the beginning than in the end. There were some uh, percentages around three and four being irritated around uh, four, three times more, being anxious three, four times more beginning after problems to fall asleep. The percentages were around three. Once we uh, finalized the therapy after a year, we had less uh, problems to fall asleep. Uh, loneliness feelings always reduced a little bit. Uh, there is a zero index when everything is more uh, distributed between one or two or three or four and increasing the alcohol consumption and other drugs. There is a high percentage of zero, but there is always a percentage that goes from a two to one, right? So as for the conduction here, we can see several indicators. If the moderators, the mediators were able to create trust and safety are aware about the group needs, do they promote, they promote uh, the improvement of participants? Are they easy to access? There is a quite a very good uh, perception. And some people, they offer two or three, quite a low. Uh, assessment and what I said before, some of the aspects that really uh, were very important it is the participation of a lot of uh, participants in an online group. We were thirty five forty. When there are too many people, it's always difficult for everybody to participate. But also, we uh, say that not from an oral participation, sometimes we have an internal change. And the people with a very few, they want to participate in an oral manner. We try from our mediation. Uh, we want everybody to say something and we comment on things. Someone didn't say anything does anyone want to close and to say a final idea? We do insist on that when someone is participating for the first time, right? In the last uh, final 10 minutes, we ask them, you, you were the first time here. How do you feel? We want them to come back. We want them to be there. We want them to feel that they belong to the group. It's kind of a tricky thing, right? A bigger amount of people in a group in just a one hour and a half. It's complicated for making them to participate. It is a very fruitful experience because we have people from other countries and places. The, the online sessions really fosters accessibility and facilitates participation. And they like it because when we were four mediators each and every mediator were very very different and each and every one of us contributed in a different way all right also on the other hand the assessment that we did as for these spaces together with the municipality of Barcelona. We had a, an anonymous survey, we got 22 answers, and we had also a professional assessment. Okay, in general terms, the space, the facility was very good. Did they feel great or not comfortable to treat with uh, anxieties and experiences? Did they uh, feel listened since they come to the center and the space, they feel better or not well some people they felt much better than others and uh, the majority of people they said that they will recommend the activity 
and the space. What was useful for them? We made also a session as well that was more participatory and a more graphic one with the papers and post-its, and we were able to assess what was the takeovers. What were the takeovers for the months uh, of experience? You are able to open your mind. Many people said that it was uh, great to be in the space, in the center. They feel more relaxed, opened. They were able to talk more. Uh, they are happy about what is expecting them. Well, many people say, I was listened. Yes, I was listened by the others. It was also useful. Uh, to me, uh, to feel that I'm contributing, and uh, the, the, the feeling of uh, being part of the group. The others listen to me. I have a value for the others. The, this is important to me. So I'm important for the others. And when someone doesn't come, right, say, why he's not there today? And the people send a WhatsApp and we call them and sometimes, well, they suffered a problem or they have another uh, appointment. So the people that are not there, they are there despite not being there. And the people, they take care of the others. What you are contributing with, it's important. People, they really listen in a very authentic manner. So that's vital. What could be different? Well, what could change? to have more activities, uh, well, and to have other professionals. Sometimes the professionals, they change due to mobility in social uh, service centers. There were some changes of the managers. There are some tenders and there are some professionals that, well, had to change the jobs uh, because they are civil servants and they change places. And also due to the amount of work, they won't be there on a weekly basis. So they change if the sale, social services, they came three people uh, also from health centers. And this rotation of the uh, staff was something that they could have changed, right? Uh, from the participants perspective, more parties, more activities. They are looking to have more activities they are looking for more activities what else i cannot see it it's very tiny okay uh let's see uh to feel well right to feel uh well and welcomed to feel welcome despite your personal situation to talk about resources to get more information about what can we do outdoors activities yes Many people actually have more outdoors activities, or maybe to go to the theater or uh, to visit uh, some uh, places or to go to a community garden or we went together. Uh, people that knew a lot about the neighborhood architecture. We had a guided tour of uh, different and old buildings in the neighborhood. This was very important. And the level of satisfaction of the sessions also was high. Me medium also satisfaction about the coordination inside the group as well. Also the group pace and the effects that we can see. What really allows these groups to have a new vision of reality? Now, here, the mirror effect, to have a broaden, a broadened mindset, to visualize new options that I didn't think about it before, also allows me to change my role, also to not to be there and to see what can I do differently, also to increase sympathy, and uh, the cooperation between experiences, also to change narratives. People that have a very close discourse, when we include new information, people, they say, maybe this was due to that, or maybe what happened to me was this, but the other people felt this way. So I should change my mind, right? So we improve the cooperation spaces, we can express, we can improve our expression abilities. You can express yourself in a very spontaneous manner and practicing the dialogue allows you to improve the way you communicate with others. There is also a moment for more safety. You feel safer in this environment. You can create more uh, security and also the acknowledgement and something that it is important also to 
clarify things. There are people that suffer a lot, that they have a, a lack of coherence. They do not know what really happened in their lives. This happened when my kid had was 10 years old, whatever. So it's kind of chaotic for them how to verbalize and to put some, this happened before or after. They have to make this exercise or not. So putting some order in your head makes you to be more planned and sometimes they are confused. So they need a narrative and sometimes they uh, feel abused. This lack of a moment, right? And you clarify everything. So you are able to put some order in your ideas and to have a better structure of the events that you suffered and to have a timeline of your life. As for conclusions, the changes that we see in the group, they are expressed outside the group. If I experience myself better inside the group, I'll be better communicate, communicating outside the group. If I train my social skills, if I train, uh, let's say, the ability to be this way or the other, if I include new things, I will keep these new things outside the group. And now, just to conclude, I want you to see another part of the documentary where the mediators intervene. This is not only a change in methodology when helping people, it also a change on the methodology. I'd like you to listen about what mediators feel when they work with this model. Okay, Maria, where are you? Maria, she is the one giving me support together with Carlota. Okay, let's stop sharing. All right, no problem. Okay, can you launch the video, Maria? Maria, uh, minute 18.31. Well, at the beginning, I didn't trust too much because I didn't understand the purpose of it. Well, I was at the margin, right? Isolated from the outside, I observed everything, but I suddenly realized that yes, that I was inside the session. I questioned myself, I thought about some situations, and in the end, I convinced myself that yes, yes, there were loads of advantages that I could observe, and many things were changing inside myself. Uh, something changed, well, I could help and I could accompany more the others. It really helped us to have another dialogue, to accept the other, to respect the perspective of the other. And the group will help us. And we are helping the group as well. We are looking for those connections uh, to convey, to see that people come. And well, we have uh, three, four families People come from uh, East Havana, Guanabacoa, very far away. They take two hours to come and two hours to come back. The interfamily therapy is a human thing. It really impacts our souls. I feel impacted through our souls. Despite I'm a mediator or co-mediators, I felt impacted when we as mediators, as therapists, we talked from the feeling we are human beings and we say what we experience, we express what we feel like something that belongs to us. And this really makes the changes possible. I felt that I was able to rebuild myself in many aspects of my personality. If you are able to do it, the other can, the others can do it. Thank you for being with us in Cuba, because we have a new fresh air that really alleviated the troubles that we had here. Open dialogue, mediators from Barcelona.
The first time, I was so scared. I saw too many people. I didn't know the family. I didn't know the mediators. I was expecting, and I said, "Wow, it's so impressive! It really helps you to be on the other people's shoes. It really made me question many things of my family. You work as professional. How do you position yourself?" I felt that it's a much more democratic space where a patient it's not a patient anymore it's more active and what you can build there it's something that belongs to everybody the therapeutic work it's made by them you as a therapist you are there you facilitate the circulation of the ideas the groups were very useful to me because at the beginning we only had children groups we had the parallel groups amongst Uh, parents and children i was in all the groups what i really like it is that really includes the perception of what a kid feels because you see and you feel you can listen to a parent talking to the kid and suddenly children they uh, understand many things they contribute Teenagers and kids are great. Uh, some days the groups finishes and they go for a coffee. They talk with the others. Please call me if you need something, right? People that uh, were completely isolated. It's fresh. Yeah, fresh. I feel fresh, much more fresh. But also from an individual perspective, right? Personal. Uh, many people could think that I'm crazy. Something happened to them, and we didn't know what it was. I believe that I'm more savvy. I'm more savvy and more humble. I'll say healthier. Professionally speaking, I'm healthier. I feel more spontaneous. I'm happier. Yes. When I have a group, I feel much better. I love. It's a working space that I really appreciate. I feel more open, uh, open-minded, and I don't see myself limited. Okay, so we conclude this uh, workshop, and uh, thank you, thank you for being with us. As for this video, uh, there were some conductors of uh, and the Cubans uh, that have uh, many groups, and many of us uh, here in Barcelona, and also the Madrid uh, mediators. I want to stop sharing because we are closing the presentation, but um, especially. Let's talk about spontaneity. Many, many times, this doesn't have to do with what we can say from the professional uh, perspective. The words that we use are very different from those that they can share amongst them. Once an individual that experiences a similar situation says, I do understand, I'm suffering the same, I feel like this or like that. So the impact has nothing to do with what we can develop and work from a therapeutic way and perspective. The impact is bigger because it's told by someone that is experiencing the being a sympathetic, this a binding, this relationship, it's completely different. Spontaneity is important and also The other idea has to do with the perspective that we have professionals when uh, facing the family uh, issues. I do love another that it's called, what's the name? I wrote it here. Williams Laws that talk about skills, the capabilities of the families. Uh, in the end, families only well think about the problems that they can solve once you cannot imagine you don't think uh, you don't see as a problem it's something so far away that it's not inside it's when you have the ability to solve it and also brace and tona talk about the competent baby the baby it is not something or someone that it's completely abandoned things that you they must do they do it perfectly They eat 
great. They sleep great. They cry great when they need something, right? Things that they must develop at that stage of life, they do it perfectly. People and family members, they have the ability to solve the situation that they suffer. Sometimes they have difficulties if we can accompany them, but they have the potential to manage the resources. And uh, many, many of them, they already experienced uh, previous uh, things in their lives. They have their personal uh, past and life experiences that will help them to reflect on things and to be aware about what they live today. This is the conclusion. I'm so sorry because in the end, the workshop was virtual. I come from very big groups and I would have loved to have a more space and this workshop would be different from the one that we had in Cuba or in Barcelona where professionals were always together to think I do this and that. We can share amongst us. Maybe we can have this kind of a workshop in a future session, but also possibilities. There were so many people that we couldn't do it differently. I don't know if we do have a question, Carlota. Yes, we do have a question. Yes. Have you had experience of these groups in a multicultural context? Uh, if you include or can we include in groups uh, mediators? Well, we try that at least the participants to have uh, knowledge for them to be more autonomous inside the groups. But there were some cases where this was not possible, but there were some mediators inside the group because uh, ABD is also mediating from an intercultural perspective. We have a lot of relationship and it's possible to have mediators. And also it happens with Catalan and Spanish. Here in Barcelona, we do have two languages. So the conductors, we are bilingual, we understand two languages. So what do we do in this case? People that only speak Catalan, that see as uh, their own language, they express themselves more and better in Catalan, they speak in Catalan. And what we do for those that do not understand Catalan, we translate it. Well, it's slower, but this is the only way that we, so, so we translate some uh, parts for those that do not understand Catalan, not to be out of the group dynamics. This is something that we work inside these spaces because at the end, uh, well, uh, for more than six years, he's in Catalonia. Why don't speak Catalan? Once again, we talk about these uh, prejudices uh, and also how to be a welcoming space because in the end, you want a real and open space. We want people to participate and to have the circumstances uh, that they have. It's an open space, welcoming space. Let's try that all the participants in the space to be welcoming. If someone doesn't speak Catalan, let's make things easier. If someone doesn't know anything in Spanish, uh, it's difficult for them, let's respect them, right? And not to have a conflict amongst participants. That's right. Eva is asking, where do you meet in Barcelona? I don't know if she's asking about the professionals or where are the groups held. Groups are held where the professionals, it's in the ABD headquarters. We did it before in another place close to the San Pao Hospital, but at the beginning of the group, and now that we uh, we are in the ABD headquarters, it is in Quevedo Street, number two, ground floor in Gracia, very close to Bailen Street. Amazing. And I know that we spoke about it after, uh, previously, it is uh, forbidden to have um, family therapy with the perpetrator because mediation is forbidden. Uh, is there any kind of regulation with this regard? There are some cases that we have of family therapy. I trained myself in Thurbano Group for more than five years. And yes, I realized that there were some uh, conflict uh, situations, such as aggressions or violence, uh, psychological violence or physical violence. They were worked inside a theoretical context. I do not recommend that. And many other therapists. Uh, uh, 
do not recommend. It is a context where people won't express the same way because it's an asymmetrical relationship. First of all, we will need a context where people, we will uh, share what happened to assess a, as a risky situation, right? It's a crime. It's a crime in the end. We will work about something that uh, there is an aggression, there is a crime. So where is the line, the right line? Yes, what's your moral obligation? Yes, we must work other things. And if the couple uh, is suffering, so be aware about it. There are many people that stop claiming or many women, they do not make a formal claim in front of the police. Uh, they have the expectation that the uh, perpetrator will change. They're going to have a new relationship. So it's a very long process until this uh, individual has the power to make this happen. And in this change, well, hopefully they will find a working methodology where the women will have its own place. I don't know if it's from the family therapy to have both of them all together uh, to suffer this kind of asymmetries in the relationship. It's not easy to me. It wouldn't be an unequal uh, relationship and an equal perspective. Also, family therapy will uh, suppose and entail changes that the perpetrator will have to make. And also, also in these risky situations, well, they come back home. So we will uh, suffering a level of risk that will be very, very high. Yes, it is a therapy context that, well, you can see them in just a session, but when do you offer them another session, who is the responsible of this? Um, you know, you as a professional, it's risky. I do completely agree. And to conclude, Francesca is asking, well, is telling, today I felt completely online with this approach that you offered. I studied community psychology in Italy and in Spain was not easy to uh, find a third uh, sector entities that work with this theory framework. What a great, Francesca, what a beautiful name you have. Amazing, so beautiful. And Isabel uh, is thanking us a lot to offering this space and see you next time. Great, thank you so much, Isabel. And uh, that's all from our side. Carol, what a pleasure to be with you. Yes. Well, it would be great, yes, to be with all of you there on site. Thank you so much for the support, Carol. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you to the interpreters that were with us. Yes, thank you to the interpreters. I do not listen to them. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you in the next training session. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.